I extend my heartiest greetings to all the people of the state. Apart from reaching another milestone in our journey towards progress, prosperity and peace, this day also provides us an occasion to look back at the bygone year with pride and satisfaction. However, unfortunately, in the previous year, people of our nation experienced untold hardship due to COVID-19. Nevertheless, due to an indomitable spirit of our leaders and frontline workers, we will certainly be able to overcome this pandemic within a short period. We can therefore look forward to another year of Republic being ushered in by this auspicious day to reinforce the endeavors for the attaining the national objective enshrined in our constitution. More than seven year, decades ago, that is on 26 January, our constitution came into effect. We all had been celebrating this day on every 26 January every year. This is why in 1950, we embarked our journey as a republic on the 26th January, affirming to the principle laid down in our constitution. Our constitution gave us right as citizens of a free democratic nation but also placed on us the responsibility to always adhere to the central tenets of our democracy, justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. It becomes easier for us to follow these constitutional ideals if we keep in mind the life and value of the father of our nation. The state government has already launched a number of welfare schemes which is especially noteworthy about them is the fact that citizens have voluntarily turned them into popular movement. The Swachh Bharat Abhiyan has achieved astounding success in such a short time. The same spirit came to be in other endeavors as well. Access to health and education are often considered the foundation of good governance. In both these sectors, we have come a long way in the seven decades. The government has rightly focused its attention on the health as well as education sector. With these ambitious initiatives, quality of health care as well as education have improved, so have its reach. Now often than not, I reiterate on several occasions that the state continues to be basically agricultural economically speaking. As a result, the quality of life in our remote helmets continue to depend on the level of progress we have achieved in increasing agricultural production and productivity. We have reasons to optimize in this regard side by side our efforts are sustained to obtain better and better results in industrial growth. The state government, which is the help of the central government, has evolved appropriate strategies to ensure a systematic and balanced growth of the economy. The massive programs undertaken by rural development involving health and sanitation, literacy, imaginative welfare measures to improve the lot of the weaker and hitherto deprived section is a clear pointer to the fact that the state government is fully aware of the basic needs of the people. I would also like to reiterate that efforts of the state government to achieve the goals will not be possible without the help and cooperation of all the section of the people. I therefore hope that you will individually and as group continue to contribute your might with full dedication to enable the state and the country to reach the threshold of real prosperity welfare within a short time. 
I have nothing but unreserved appreciation for our security forces. Their sacrifices to preserve the integrity and unity of our state present a saga of unparalleled courage and discipline. Therefore, let us take note of the immense sacrifices made by the members of the security forces and reaffirm our faith in their capacity to continuously lend a strength to the people's endeavors. Let them know that we are grateful for their smilingly bearing with innumerable difficulties while working as the sentinels of the freedom and republic. Our farmers, doctors and nurses, teachers who impart learning and values, scientists and engineers, alert and active youth, industrious members of our workforce, entrepreneurs contributing to our economic wealth, artists who enrich our culture, service sector professionals who have earned appreciation, our fellow citizens contributing in many other spheres of activity and especially our resilient daughters who have scaled new heights of achievement against odds that bring pride to our state and country. The historic occasion is a day of rejoicing and today we enjoy the status of being the world's largest democracy and one of the major players in the globe. A special emphasis has been laid at national and state level in recent years on rapid and more inclusive growth with the focus on being bring about social equality through the reduction of poverty and empowerment of our people by adopting multi-pronged strategies. I am confident that the people of Manipur who have always been torchbearers in every movement for change will emerge as role models for the rest of the country. Let us renew our pledge on this historic day to the re rededicate ourselves to the ideals of nationalism and of patriotism and to work with commitment, dedication, faith and confidence to make Manipur and the country strong and vibrant. I once again convey my Republic Day greeting to all of you and I extend my best wishes for your bright future. Jai Hind!